I've got 11 Mac applications that I use every single day, and I think that after watching this video, you'll see exactly why. Let's jump in. First up is a very simple yet sophisticated and time-saving sticky note application called AntiNote. And at first glance, this just looks like your average run-of-the-mill scratch pad for the Mac, but it is so much more. This is now my favorite note-taking app, even over Apple Notes. So first off, you can see by pressing Option A, that's how you can bring up and hide this AntiNote very easily. So if you open up a web page right here, you can see it hovers on top. If you press this, it will go behind. So you have a little button to press to pin it to the top of the screen or not. But let me just show you right away. So first off, if you press slash, it will show you all the different commands you can do here. So you have list, math, sum, average, and so on. But let me show you one of my favorites first. So if we press seven right here for paste, and then we press return, it will automatically paste to my clipboard, and it's going to paste it in plain text. So if I select this with a header, with links, everything, if I press copy, you can see it will automatically paste it right here in my anti-note screen, and it will continue to paste everything that I copy to my clipboard until I press right here to end the auto pasting. Or check this out. If I take a screenshot of this text right here or any type of screenshot with text in it, and I go ahead and drag this right into the AntiNote screen, it will automatically decipher that text and it will put it in here as plain text from the image. The math feature is better than the one that's built into the Apple Notes application. There's a word counter, there's a timer for Pomodoros, and it's super simple to export these notes. And it's also highly customizable. So you have different themes that you could choose right here. And there are a ton of different options for the font size, the paper type, the paper type opacity, you have your keywords, shortcuts, your timer settings, all of this right here. So for $5, this is one of the best bang for your buck applications I've bought in quite some time. Next up is Folder Preview. And this might be the simplest application on this list, but it's extremely useful and I use it every single day because it gives me a quick view of the contents within a folder. So if I go into my finder, you guys have all been there. You have a folder and you know usually you'd have to go into the folder and then drop down and then drop down again to see everything inside of that folder. However, if we go back here, now that we have Folder Preview installed, if you press space on a folder, it will show you everything inside of that folder and it's also interactive so you could press right here you can click on different things in here you have sorting options it's almost like another finder window but it's in the preview window and this is very useful for quickly seeing all of the contents inside of a folder next up is substage and this gives you a little drop down window that uses AI for all of your finder windows so it says enter query or command and you can see it's using GPT-5 mini as of now so so there's kind of a lot you could do with this. So I'm just going to show you some of my favorite ways to use this. So something I like to do is to convert something very easily instead of using an application or, you know, going right here and using a quick action. There's an easier way to do that. So if I want to make this file size a little bit smaller, it's 705 megabytes. If I select that, I could put in a command here using natural language. So I'm just going to type in make 1080p and press return. And then it will convert that file into a 1080p video very quickly and easily without any other add-ons needed. And there we go, it says video resize to 1080p and you can see it's 41 megabytes now. So it did a good job of resizing that. Now there's a lot more you could do with this as well. This is also an easy way to convert files. So if I have three JPEGs right here, I'll just type in simply PNG and it will understand that I'm trying to convert those to a PNG file. So we're just gonna type that and you can see already it's done right there. And we have all three of those as PNG files. And if you tap on this little red exclamation point, it will show you everything that has been done and you could follow up as well. So if I press command R, that will allow me to follow up on that. So if I could just say zip now, it will zip these files into a folder. And if I have that file selected and I type in trash, it can also move it to the trash. And if you have a folder with a lot of different files, you can get really specific with the file types that you want to select. So I don't really have a lot to work with in this folder, but if I say something like select all files from yesterday, it will select all the files that were modified yesterday. So this is substage. It's not the fastest thing in the world it does kind of crawl along a little bit so I would maybe try out the one month you know trial before spending the full $30 on this at least just to see if you like it I think it has some potential but it is still early on so just keep that in mind next up is doc door and this adds a window style preview when hovering over an application in the dock so as you can see right here I have Safari and we have three different windows opened up and when I hover over Safari it shows me those three windows it'll also show
show me the title of that page. So it'll show me right here. It kind of, you know, drags across and shows me the full title of that page. And also you can see this one here as well. And if we go up top to the Safari logo, we have the option to close all and minimize all straight from there. So I press minimize all. There we go. If we go right here, I can close all with one button as well. Now, also, if you have an application opened up in the foreground, not minimized, if you go over it, you could see that right here, you have the option to X out of it, minimize or make full screen. And here's what it looks like for the notes application, for example. And we're just going to go ahead and right click and we'll just go to close. So we'll close out that window. And you know what? Let's just quit the whole application. We could do that. And then it will quit out of notes completely. And you also get some appearance settings in here as well, where you can change the preview size. You could change the doc previews and window switcher. You could change the max amount of rows. And my favorite thing, the thing I think you should disable right away is right here, ignore apps with one window. So I'd recommend turning that on. That way it doesn't constantly go down here and hover over and show you the window if you only have one window open for that application. It's kind of redundant if you don't have that turned on. Now, the next one you have undoubtedly heard of, and that is Clean My Mac. This is something I use every single day. And yes, they are sponsoring this video, but even if they were not, this is a must have application that I use all the time. I need you to check your iCloud storage right now because I'm willing to bet that there are dozens of files in there that you don't use and they're probably taking up a good chunk of the storage that you pay for. But thankfully for you and also for me, Clean My Mac just made our lives a lot easier with their new cloud cleanup feature. So you know how Clean My Mac cleans up all the unused or unnecessary files on your Mac? Well, now it does that, but for your iCloud, Google Drive, or OneDrive accounts. I have the Google Drive app on my Mac right here, so Clean My Mac will be able to go in there and detect large unused files and remove them to clear up the cloud space. And the best part is all of this scanning happens locally. It happens on device. So your data is going to stay secure and you can even restore deleted files if you change your mind. So yeah, Clean My Mac was pretty much already an essential for the Mac, but now I just see it as a must have application for your Mac with this new cloud cleanup feature. So if you want to try Clean My Mac free for seven days to try it out for yourself, click my link down in the description below. And if you use my code Brandon20, you'll get 20% off. Next up is Monocle. And this is one that really took me a while to really see its value. But what this does is it removes distractions by blurring everything but your active window. So I'm sure you guys have been there before. You have multiple windows open. We have notes right here in the background. I just want to focus on my Safari window right here, but I keep getting distracted and I keep reading the notes back here. Well, this application solves that because with a simple press right up here in the menu bar, take a look at this. Everything in the background is now blurred and I have my full focus now in the Safari window and I cannot look over and get distracted by anything in the background. Now you can click if you want to go into that and make that, you know, the one that you're focused on you can do that if you know where it's at but monocle does a great job of removing those distractions and if you right click on the menu bar item up in the top you can see you can change it as well so deep is the default but if we change that so we'll go into here and then we'll go up here and change this to ambient you can see it makes it a little bit more subtle so you can still kind of read what's in the background i personally like the first option better i like deep so it fully blurs out everything and then you also have your settings right here where you can change you know the opacity the theme the grain the fade, all of that, along with certain rules. So if you want to auto hide the dock and menu bar, or if you only want one or the other, you could do that right there, along with some excluded applications. Next up is Docky. And this is another very simple one, but what it does is very useful. So it speeds up the animation to bring up your dock when it's hidden. So as you guys see, I always keep my dock hidden down at the bottom just to maximize my screen real estate and also to reduce distractions. But without Docky, it was always so slow to pull up my applications. But as you can see now, when I go down there, they pop up pretty much instantly. And with Docky, you can add an animation delay if you want to. So if you want the animation speed to be the default, and if you want the animation delay to be a little, you can see you can go down here and there is a subtle delay. But I personally like having no animation delay and I like the animation speed being instant. That way I can always access my dock as quick as possible. Now we also have another dock application and this one is called Dockflow. And this is one that I kind of have known about for a while, but I haven't really used it much until recently. So what this does is it allows you to save custom dock configurations based on your task. So for example, you can see I have my stock 
dock right here. And I also have a preset for videos that automatically shows when I'm creating videos. So for example, you could see my dock down here has all these applications, but if I apply the video preset, which I created, you can see we'll do a little refresh and take a look at this. Now it only shows a few applications that I need for when I'm shooting a video. You could also add dock items as well. So if you want to add different folder stacks, different files, URLs, anything like that, you could add it right there to dock items, which those show up over here on the right, or you could add web apps as well. So I'm a big fan of minimal applications that really don't take up much space on your screen, but they provide a great service. And this next application is called Sidebar Calendar, and it does just that. So this exists only in the very side of your screen of your display and it does not pop up unless you tell it to pop up so right here it's kind of unsuspecting but if you put your cursor all the way over to the right in my example and then you can see this little red outline right here but you can always just click right there and then it will pull up your sidebar calendar that will show you your different events and reminders for that specific day it also makes it really easy to drag and kind of move these to a new time slot right there you could also right click to edit the event or the note and if you right click and go into settings in here you also have your options for how many calendars or which calendars you want to be set up to show in the sidebar calendar you also have your different settings right here so if you don't want it to auto hide you can deselect that if you just kind of always want it to be up right there on the side so you always see your events you can do that you could also dim the past events you can change the font size and so on and then you do also have your shortcuts right here along with your productivity where you can kind of set your daily goal for how much you want to work on each specific day i find this app to be extremely useful for dual display setups so if you do have two different displays one on the right one on the left i think this works really well being on the left display on the right side or on the right display on the left side whichever way you use your monitors next up is latest and this is an application that's very simple as well but it's so useful because it allows you to update all of your applications not just the applications from the app store so i know you guys have been there it's so easy to get notifications for when you need to update an app in the app store but when you've downloaded so many third-party apps it's really hard to keep track of updating those applications until you open it for the next time and then you get that alert but with this latest application it allows you to see all of your applications and which ones need updates so it shows your version along with the new version right there and you could just simply select it and press updates and it will automatically update that application you could also select you know a couple of them so we'll just do actually if we just go up to file right here and go to update all that will allow you to update all of your applications at one time but this is extremely useful as well because it will also show you the change log right here so it will actually take the information from that application and show the change log there as well so very very useful highly recommend this if you're like me and you have a ton of third-party applications that you can't keep track of all the updates now here's a cool one that I use all the time and this one's called umbra so what this does is it allows you to change your wallpaper based on your current appearance so if you're in light mode it will use this specific wallpaper if you're in dark mode it will use this wallpaper that you choose so all you have to do is hover over this and you can choose the file or you can use unsplash to select your light mode and your dark mode wallpaper and you can see that now when it goes into dark mode it will automatically change my wallpaper to the dark mode wallpaper that i have set right here and there are a couple of settings in here as well if you want to set up the keyboard shortcuts or if you want to change the menu bar icon style and so on and then the final application is called upscale and this is one that's really cool because it uses ai to make your images higher resolution so i'm sure we've all been there you have an image that you wish was higher resolution but you don't really know how to do that this application makes it simple so all you have to do is select an image and then you choose your ai model so you have all these different models right here that you can choose from it really just depends on what your subject is like ultra sharp for example is just for natural images if you just took a picture of a building it will just focus on the sharpness of that object or digital art so this one might be actually more digital art so we're just going to select that one and see how it goes we also have double upscale this is just going to run the ai tool twice on an image you could also choose the image scale as well so if you want it to be much larger you could do that or if you just want to keep it the same size just increase the quality you could do that i'll just do a 2x right here and you can see it will upscale it from 1280 by 17 20 to 5120 by 2880 and we'll just click on upscale and now it will do its job there we go and now you can see that when you hover over it it will show you the original versus the upscale ai version and you can see a pretty big difference between the two so this looks much better now look at that 
right here on the end so definitely did a much better job it's much more clear and I use this all the time when I'm using images for my newsletter or you could use this for people as well look at the edges right here so much better clearly and if you're curious about how this works on skin and on people you can see kind of how much better this looks on my hair and my skin the image was not the best quality to begin with but you can see that it did a much better job of sharpening that image so anyways guys there you have it those are some of my favorite mac applications as of late it's really hard to come by good mac applications that are not greatly covered here on youtube so i always try to find some hidden gems in there as well so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up also make sure to subscribe and we'll have another mac apps video coming in the next couple of months but anyways guys thanks for watching and i'll see you soon